It is the moment we've all been waiting for. What? No, no, that was the other moment we'd all been waiting for. After Neil Breen's Double Down and I Am Here Now, the true Breenster piece of his filmography is the 2013 film Fateful Findings, a movie that I was so excited to get to after Double Down that I completely forgot I Am Here Now even exists. Hell yeah! I'll do her! Damn! Twins! And how could I have fucking forgotten about that movie? Seriously, I meant to do this review at the beginning of the year. This title card was drawn months ago. But it all works out, because last week, the trailer for Neil Breen's latest movie, Twisted Pear, was released. Let's take a look at a clip! I have an identical twin brother kill. That's all I needed to see. I'm sold. Faithful Findings is the story of Dylan, a man who knows the secrets, knows the conspiracies, and knows all the answers to, uh, something to do with the government. Ah, fuck it, he knows the secret to the Colonel's secret KFC recipe. I have no clue what kind of drugs go into the making of something like this, but I can tell you this much, the clouds are certainly on cocaine. Let's get this Breen party Breen started. <laughs> Green. Oh, damn it, my screensaver kicked in. The fuck is this? A podium? Uh, a birdhouse? A wood grill? Can we get a little closer? Oh, it's the script. You might have to cut a few pages out of that. It's bad enough this movie is a hundred minutes. And you best believe there's more credits. Oh, does Neil Breen have something to do with this? Here we see Dylan as a child just having a normal day. <laughs> I bet that gets explained. You know how kids are with finding poisonous things. Look, Leah, a mushroom. It sure is! That's weird. Usually you find the treasure after eating the mushrooms. She does what any person would do. She uses it as a box to put her thumbtacks in. Grandma will love it. What a magical day. It's a magical day. Thanks for the script note. You didn't actually have to put that in the movie. Unfortunately, his friend Leah has to move away. They say goodbye in the most awkward way possible. Joke's on them, they don't have a license plate. They are not making it to the airport on time. Not to mention they're driving five miles an hour. Leah and I had a fantastic summer together. I never heard from her or saw her again. No, Neil, it's only the beginning. <laughs> Years later, the kid grows up to be Neil Breen, accident-prone vigilante-slash-novelist. Can you hear me? <laughs> Move over, Tom Cruise. You aren't the only one who does his own stunts. Given that this is a Neil Breen movie, he could be dead. That wouldn't stop him from being in the rest of it. There are several witnesses, or at least their legs, who have noticed something. Someone help this poor man! Great! Ghost sperm! That'll help! Okay, Dylan, we've got you loaded up and we're gonna repeatedly bash your head against the limo to see where it hit you. Is he okay? Okay, okay, calm down! I'll be right there! Ah, good, that guy's on his way. Who the fuck is that guy? Don't worry, Dylan, we fancied up our finest living room to make it look like a hospital. Don't worry about that oxygen. It may not be going through the bandages, but it's there. He's in critical condition. Unconscious. And it does not look good. Maybe you should take him to a hospital. I'm not sure when this movie's gonna start. Why can't this film be as fast-paced as the clouds? You can really tell everything about a patient just by his pulse. 
He is very weak. Semi-comatose. He isn't my patient, but... Then who the fuck are you, and can we get a real doctor in here? Stupid hospital can't even close the damn window. And that's when Dylan decided to get the fuck out of there and go to a hospital where they don't just tape a jock strap to your face. <laughs> he should count himself lucky that his face was the only thing injured in this accident. It's easy for him to find his way home. It has the same carpeting as the hospital. His wife, Emily, has a natural reaction to him wandering home from being in a coma. What are you doing home? You're supposed to be in a hospital. I know what puts me in the mood. Someone's face melting off into the damn drain. I guess the laptops aren't as easily flexible as his face. Uh. His bandage is getting smaller every day. The bandage must be healing. Dylan is a famous novelist, as you can see by him autographing encyclopedias. Hope this movie doesn't lose focus. Can I offer you a drink? No thanks. Are you sure? I hate it when two drunks randomly stumble into another movie I'm watching. We don't have sex anymore. Do you realize that? Where did that come from? My thoughts exactly. Where did this come from? And anyway, get back to Neil. Where are my pills? Damn, they're not in my breasts. Where have I left them? I don't need these. I'm not going to take these anymore. Glad we got that scene. The laptops really are the most important actors in a Neil Breen movie. That's why they made it to the box cover this time, along with the same fucking picture of Neil. Meanwhile, in the womb, truly the miracle of life is always in the palm of our hands. I feel like something's inside me. I concur. It feels like an Alaskan salmon. We'll find out what it is once we return to Will It Fit. No time for that now. Neil has a meeting with his publisher. <laughs> Fucking necessary. This movie is as fluid as a dry brick. I'm feeling less stable. I edited nothing out of that. What the hell is Tony Montana's house doing in this? His Breen sense is tingling. Don't worry, that laptop was broken anyway. Throw in the bathtub if you want. Hey, just checking on the plot. You care more about that car than me. I don't care about either of you. I still don't know who you are. Look, maybe we should get to know each other. We just found out we're in the same movie. Blech, maybe their scenes are better apart. It'd be less awkward. I'm dying for someone to shit their pants to break the tension. Dylan is more intense than the drunk. But I have this really interesting project about elephants in Africa. I'm sure Dylan doesn't want to hear about that now. I want to hear about our project. Tell it to me right goddamn now. What the fuck did you do to those elephants? Fuck this goddamn notebook. I'll get this laptop to work if I have to spill 12 more cups of coffee on it. I'm going to continue hacking into these government systems to see what I can find out. So that's what's going on now. But bad news at home. He stopped taking his meds. Can you get some for me? Your actress hasn't slept in 48 hours. You really should give her a break. Tension is high. Over what? I don't know. We've gone through the good times and the bad times together. Your pill taking for pain relief has gotten out of control. Brilliant scene reading from Tennessee Williams' cat on a medium temperature carpeted floor. Eh, fuck this drama. There's work to do. It's gonna shock the world. I've hacked into just about all the information I need. I hacked into MoviePass. I'm gonna find out just how many people saw show dogs. Oh, the conversation is about Emily being on drugs again. It's a crutch. Get off the pills. 
Straighten your life out. Maybe it's because of you. She raises a good point, Dylan. Fortunately, there is one thing that will get her off drugs. His Breenus. The laptop budget is bigger than the Viagra budget on Strokemon. Neil's penis is just as awkward as this scene. Why is his dick in a knot? How does it do that? I hesitate to ask who this is because that's going to be immediately followed by something confusing happening. See? Oh good, this couple again. I'm sorry. Indoor voices. This subplot is like watching your local theater act out the Diane Wee subplot from Independence Day 83. Crazy. Only without a house explosion budget. They do have a transition budget though. And then Ghost Dad fucking showed up! Drugs or no drugs, things have never been better between these two. He's getting so much writing done. Come to bed. I'm sorry. I'd love to. But I need you to go away now. Thanks, polite Jack Torrance. Later he's gonna do her a favor by hitting himself with a bat. Meanwhile, back in the womb, why did mommy have a square vagina? It's because truly we are all born lame and uninteresting. Ah, good, the cast rap party. These are the kinds of people I want to see do small talk. The doctor at the hospital. It's nice to see you. I'd like you to meet my fiance, Tim. Very nice to meet you. I've already forgotten your name, Jim. Hello, the doctor is the same girl from the beginning of the movie who happens to carry the same fucking notebook with her. Oh my god. Is that you? It is, isn't it? I doubt it. You're 20 years older than she is. So, by I never saw her again, what he meant to say was, I saw her again. Why do I have the feeling that some of these actors had to go home? Get away from me, Jen. You're drunk. And stay there. Is this infomercial gonna get to the fucking point? When in doubt, though, rip off an 80s movie. Well, if he's not gonna masturbate, then I sure as hell am. It's starting to rain. Let's take this seduction inside. I've decided to write a script where everyone wants to fuck me. Nothing wrong with nonfiction. It should be noted that it took me over a week to do this episode. I lost my notes for the second half of the movie and had to rewatch it again. I wanted to wait until a week later so it would feel like I was coming into it fresh. I even recorded the first half of this episode before watching the second half of the movie to see if it would jog my memory. Let's see if that helped. Oh, you can come over and use our swimming pool anytime you want. Ah, good. Now I'm all caught up. I know exactly what's going on in this movie. I'm tired of watching this! I even recorded this episode in SD to mask my unenthusiasm. Dylan calls up the girl's sister mom to get her over there right away and pick up her horny daughter. When did this movie turn into Poison Ivy? Everyone wants to have sex with Dylan and no one else. Stay away from me. Wine stains are impossible to get out of breasts. Only one thing can be done now. Revenge. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes. No, no, no! Good, he landed right on the conveniently placed plastic. Too bad about the witnesses, though. 
Dad! You didn't see Dad. anything! Dad! You Dad. know how he was! Dad! This is why I'm glad Columbo's not a YouTube Red series. Oh no, his collar is leaking. Ugh, she better have a good excuse here. He killed himself! He killed himself! This is the easiest level of L.A. Noir I've ever played. Clearly she's telling the truth. It's performances like this that make me glad for the Oscar changes. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? He's a shoe-in for most brainspirational performance. Weeks later, he's still shocked by all this. How could Jim have killed himself? After looking up suicide in my encyclopedia, I can now say for a fact it was suicide. As he is stuck inside of a giant leech, we are truly in a world of bloodsuckers. The important thing is Emily has nothing to do with the suicide because she has nothing to do with anything else. Jim's suicide was not your fault. You can't blame yourself. It was not your fault. Dude, she's not even thinking about that. She's just trying to do her taxes in her head. Oh, this relationship will last. You're better off without me. No. Thanks, Pinhead. At least if she were without you, she'd still have a laptop that worked. How is Dylan ever going to get back to work? Hello. I'm working. I'm very busy. You're doing the fucking crosswords. Dylan decides not to sign a book deal. There was a book deal. I genuinely don't know if this is out of nowhere or if I just forgot that he had a book deal going on. That first book made a fortune for you. Take the deal. You need to pay to have those laptops fixed. Gentlemen, I'm glad you could all attend this meeting. One of you needs to step up your game in editing this film. Look, Mr. Book President, can you talk to my wife? I think she's a little loopy. He isn't writing another novel. He's writing about government secrets. Yeah, this is what dating Alex Jones for two weeks does to a person. And then he cheats on his wife with that girl he grew up with. He's known her since she was negative 30. Even the ducks wanted to disappear before this on-screen chemistry. Mmm, forehead penetration. That's a new one for me. Meanwhile, Celia Ward is still trying to cope with the loss of sisters. And Dylan is still on a bad trip. Hmm, this means something. The person who wrote this has a brain sculpted from mashed potatoes. She's had a very fulfilling life. In all these years, she hasn't written anything else in that notebook. His wife really wants him to monologue about suicide again. On the plus side, water will come right out of those sheets. Stop, stop, go back to suicide wife. I don't need to see the role of Tarzan now played by my high school physics teacher. He makes it home quicker than he climaxes. Well, she got her final wish of hearing him monologue one more time. It was you. I know it was you. No, Ray, it was you. All she left him was a device too small for him to pound his fingers on. How is he going to break that thing? And his Laffy Taffy left him too. Aren't we all just in a giant bag of trash with the rest of the human garbage? Why is this movie considered to be so bad? Obviously it has messages, you just have to look for them. On the plus side, he's writing again, and his therapist is very happy. Maybe one day she can pay for a real office instead of sitting in the timeout corner. He has a new love in his life that he can be weird around.
Is this a service you're providing her? He has now hacked into the most secret form of government secrets. I've hacked into the most secret government and corporate secrets and discovered corporate and government cheating, lying, corruption, and hypocrisy. Yes, he's hacked into the government's evil plan of eliminating specifics. When can these secrets be revealed or created? I can't wait any longer. Neil Breen is giving us an inside look into the writer's room of death of a nation. I'm certain they wrote that movie on broken laptops, too. Huh? What? I would say meanwhile, but this whole movie is a meanwhile. Luckily, her hero is right around the corner. Leah! Leah, are you there? Leah, pick up! Oh no, a storage unit has her phone! Action hero Neil is my favorite Neil. Where is she? Who? Leah! I don't know who that is. Give me the keys of these locks. I, I used to play checkers with guys like you in prison. I'm here to kick names and take ass. Then he rescues her. What a scary two minutes. But I need to put the blindfold back on. Trust me. Trust me. I'm going to do something that you can't see. Now is not the time to play penis or bratwurst. Oh, and he's Nightcrawler now. Let's go. Hey, look, they lost the door key. This effect was a lot easier than getting a new key made. And all the girls still want to bang him. You know he didn't kill himself. She shot him. She killed him. I saw her. What? Oh, right. That was a thing that happened in this movie. You have got to go to the police. Now! But why? You're Kitty Pride. Oh shit, Michael Myers is walking around the hospital from the beginning of the movie, and worse yet... You keep beating those laptops and they are going to come to life and kill you. What is this intruder here for? Ghost facial. Classy. <laughs> Don't wake Brainy. Are you supposed to be in there? And I don't know if that therapist was even a therapist at all. Or maybe she was. At the least, she was a cheap one. But keep the chairs. They need them for the cafeteria. More like, I am not here now. And that goes for the intruder. Mmm, self-cleaning nosebleed. That would have been much harder if he were standing on the carpet. Now he's able to get the truth out there. In the slowest news day of the week, the world is here to meet outside of his private green screen. I've been hacking into government and corporate systems all over the country. Who is clapping? He doesn't specifically talk about anything, really, other than he knows facts and secrets and the shocking truth that there is corruption. They now know my crimes. The fuck? Talk about a guilt complex. You didn't even know what info he had on you. This guy waits till he gets home. Who wants to die in front of a Breen screen? These people must be punished and eliminated immediately. I'm not sure a lynch mob is a good idea, Neil Breen. Not to mention, they all seem to be killing themselves anyway over no information being given. Did they have something else tragic going on in their lives? And this was the last straw? And why is the audience still clapping? There's like a dozen dead bodies next to the podium. This poor guy slits his wrists before he even finished his bottle of maple syrup. And who is clapping? 
the political and corporate dishonesty that exists. Is that who's clapping? The fucking bushes? Oh, there's an assassin. Not sure why that's necessary. All the tracks seem to be cleaning themselves. And amazed at what I have here. Why are none of the reporters covering the mass shooting that keeps happening mere feet from them? Oh, is this the movie's message? Act now. On your own. Act now. Fine, I'll buy war bonds. If that means more Neil Breen movies, then you bet your ass I'll buy war bonds. My god, now that the secrets of the secret secrets have been revealed, where does it all go from here? Great, now the world knows that corruption exists, and now a fucking werewolf is loose. Good job, Neil. The end. Faithful Findings is Neil Breen's most notorious movie. It's the one that frequently gets brought up in requests, forums, and a host of bad movie parties and internet reviews. It's certainly the first one I had even heard of, due to multiple people recommending it to me. I'm not really sure what separates this film from the others, since they all seem to be bad for kind of the same reason, and if anything, the violence was amped up in the previous two movies. What? This damn piece of garbage? But somehow, this was the first one to be brought to a lot of people's attention. Although I may have to side with the other movies, if anything, for Double Down being a love letter to Tuna Fish. And because thanks to the internet, I already kinda knew what was gonna happen in this film, whereas the other two, I was sorta surprised. Then again, this shit happened in Fateful Findings, so maybe this one's better. <laughs> Face shower sex. And what the fuck did any of this have to do with anything? Ugh, so confused. Uh, I'll just go with the one that had twins, bro. Twins! Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to watching anything else. I don't like having to watch a movie twice. I did the Hillary's America episode in between this episode. And you could tell that that was worth it by the fact that that review was gone. Conspiracy? I think it committed suicide. I'm hungry. I can't wait for dinner. Rock, rock, Sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stoned gremlin productions. Follow us on Twitter at the cinema snob or check out our homepage at the cinema snob.com.